Hi, fifth graders. Uh, so today for reading, I'm going to have you um, read the second part of Camp Life. Um, to start out, I'd like to kind of have you review your annotations that we took yesterday as we read part one. Um, remember the background? We learned that the boys have run away to Jackson's Island um, and they're just kind of camping out on the island. We got a little taste of what their daily life was like, how they're fishing, how they're exploring. Um, we, on the next pages, we learned about um, how the boys have this sense of loneliness, how they're feeling kind of homesick. Um, and then moving into page 15 that we wrapped up with yesterday, we learned that the boys are hearing this strange sound, a peculiar sound in the distance, a mysterious sound. Um, later on, it's described as a deep, sullen boom. And then again, a muffled boom. Um, so the boys, as we left off yesterday, are going to kind of figure out what is going on. So I am going to go ahead and play the audio for part two. I'd like you to follow along in your notebook and I would like you on your own today to highlight and annotate the important events. Um, feel free to pause this video as often as you need. In class, I often am pausing the audio um, so that you can kind of catch up and that you can make notes about important things. So do that on your own today, pause frequently. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the audio. You can use this to follow along with as we read part two today. They sprang to their feet and hurried to the shore toward the town. They parted the bushes on the bank and peered out over the water. The little steam ferry boat was about a mile below the village, drifting with the current. Her broad deck seemed crowded with people. There were a great many skiffs rowing about or floating with the stream in the neighborhood of the ferry boat. But the boys could not determine what the men in them were doing. Presently, a great jet of white smoke burst from the ferryboat's side, and as it expanded and rose in a lazy cloud, that same dull throb of sound was borne to the listeners again. I know now, exclaimed Tom. Somebody's drowned. That's it, said Huck. They done that last summer. When Bill Turner got drowned, they shoot a cannon over the water, and that makes him come up to the top. Yes, and they take loaves of bread and put quicksilver in them and set them afloat. And wherever there's anybody that's drowned, they'll float right there and stop. Yes, I've heard about that, said Joe. I wonder what makes the bread do that. Oh, it ain't the bread so much, said Tom. I reckon it's mostly what they say over it before they start it out. But they don't say anything over it, said Huck. I've seen them and they don't. Well, that's funny, said Tom. But maybe they say it to themselves. Of course they do. Anybody might know that. By G by jings, I wish I was over there now, said Joe. I do too, said Huck. I'd give heaps to know who it is. The boys still listened and watched. Presently, a revealing thought flashed through Tom's mind, and he exclaimed, Boys, I know who's drowned. It's us. They felt like heroes in an instant. Here was a gorgeous triumph. They were missed. They were mourned. Hearts were breaking on their account. Tears were being shed. Accusing memories of unkindness to these poor lost lads were rising up. And availing regrets and remorse were being indulged. And best of all, the departed were the talk of the whole town and the envy of all the boys as far as this dazzling notoriety was concerned. This was fine. It was worthwhile to be a pirate after all. As twilight drew on, the ferry boat went back to her accustomed business and the skiffs disappeared. The pirates returned to camp. They were jubilant with vanity over their new grandeur and the illustrious trouble they were making. 
They caught fish, cooked supper, and ate it, and then fell to guessing at what their village was thinking and saying about them, and the pictures they drew of the public distress on their account were gratifying to look upon from their point of view. But when the shadows of night closed them in, they gradually ceased to talk. And sat gazing into the fire, with their minds evidently wandering elsewhere. All right, guys, that is the end of the passage for today. I'd like you to look back over your notes and annotations that you took for the entire story. So not just what we read today, but pages twelve through nineteen. So the entire story of camp life. I'd like you to look over those annotations. And then today, I want you to list the key events, uh, five to six key events, and then I'd like you to type a summary where you retell in about a paragraph uh, what the story was about. All right, so there's an attached Google document that you'll use to complete that work today.